Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. So this is going to be my third attempt at the direct lunar landing today. We re recorded attempt 8 and 9. This is going to be attempt number 10. Attempt number 8 was a success. Attempt number 9 was a fail. So uh, interesting to note that after three consecutive successes, we had a fail. But I think we learned a little bit from that failure. So let's take that information bring it forward into attempt number 10 and see how we do. Let's switch camera views and jump into it. So let's view our flight record. Nine attempts, three successes. Uh, best was 325 seconds to spare, five crashes, and one suffocation. All right, so there's our bang and kill rotate immediately. Open our retro doors. Switch that over, left shift escape, right shift escape, powers up our MFDs. And let's immediately get underway with the interplanetary and the base approach program that we've been using. We're going to target Brighton Beach. And we're going to use the old program so we have access to more information. Once again, we know the altitude of the landing spot now is negative 2566 or thereabout so we don't have to uh, put in zero although maybe putting in zero is beneficial somehow and i feel like that negative 0 0.3 anticipation angle is working for us so let's stick with that now we have a question of time so we did start this flight with probably close to 59 minutes but let's uh, do what we've been doing so we're going to start with uh, 2700 so that's 548 2800 is 468 and 2900 is 419 now we could maybe go a bit higher than that even but if we go to like 3000 we're gonna have 402 i don't feel like that's a big saving let's try 2950 this time since we did have a few more seconds in our starting condition and let's burn while that's going let me just double check i targeted everything yes so while that's going let's enter our data for this flight so we did 2950 and we're sticking with that negative 0.3 for now. All right, switch back over here. So while that's burning, we can set our vertical speed. Again, I think around negative 10 is probably a, a reasonable place to have that set so that when we come out of our burn, you know, we can, we can still be descending, but not by a huge amount. All right, and uh, well, yeah, we'll bring up ComNav. Again, I don't feel like it does us any good to do the long range because we can just use GPS VTOL for that. So we're just going to do the the uh, landing pad number one. And again, I've been keeping that in my spreadsheet so I don't have to look it up every time. And once again, I'm gonna go to 132.15 because of that uh, offset or that off frequency on frequency thing, which I don't know why that's happening, but the fact that it is happening, we'll just set it off by one bring up our memory and we're going to get Brighton Beach. So this will be for our long range and then we'll use VOR, VTOL for the landing pad. All right, now bring up map. We're going to target Brighton Beach and we're going to scroll down. I always get this wrong and I want to scroll to the right. So do I want to pick the left? Yeah, weird. All right, zoom in a bit more to the left and a bit more up because I want to go down, zoom in, and I want to go to the left, so I'm going to go right, and zoom in, and zoom in. Okay, and I want to go down, so I'm going to go up, and we're right across the landing, uh, right across the base, so I'm not going to mess with that. All right, let's go retrograde. And what else do I need to set? Let's bring up burn time calculator on this side. And on this side, we're going to bring up our camera. And I think if I go previous, previous, that's probably fastest. So previous a couple of times gets us there the fastest. All right, a little bit of time warp to let the autopilot settle. Out of time warp, shut that off, kill rotate, kill rotate one more time. And I'm pretty sure that's everything. Maybe I should even make a checklist for these things. But I think that's everything. And now we're going to go down to our 400 kilometer mark. Whew. 
Don't overshoot. So once we get down to about 400 kilometers, that's when we're going to figure out our velocities. So about right. About right. Now we're going to go to 0 0.1 and we're going to put in the DV. And again, these are really close, but they're high. So that's something to keep in mind. I think it was 3377. Yeah, close enough. Okay, so we're going to pause. Now these are high. So, so even though the range is really close, the fact that they're high and we saw that in the last flight and we had a ground crash. So we'll keep that in mind this time. So 221,384, let's go ahead and switch camera views, type that in, and this is the highest it's been. 221,384, and now back over here, unpause, put in our DV here, 3529 we're seeing. Give that a second to update and pause. And now we're going to switch over here. So 241,537. 241,537. All right, now we're going to copy down everything. So again, our range is tight. And this is one of the smallest ranges we've seen, but this is the highest velocity we've seen. And on the last flight, we saw that this doesn't work. So I'm thinking that we want to go at least up here, and I might even want to add an 80% column. Pretty tempted to do, to do that, because the difference between here and here is only three kilometers, two, two and some change, and the difference between here and here is only, you know, yeah, one kilometer and some change. So, hmm. Let me ponder that for a moment. So the simulation's pause. We don't have to worry about timing out. I'm going to add another column. I don't even feel like 80%. Let me actually go 100% of... Well, I guess that doesn't make any sense because then if I do that, I can just go by that number. And I'm going to do that, actually, because the differences here are so small. I'm going to use, I'm going to go at 242 kilometers on this burn. And I'm, I'm actually thinking, based on what we saw in the previous flight, maybe that isn't going to be enough. Mm. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go 100%. So this would be 0%, this would be 100%, and then these are our differences in between. And I, I feel like we know for sure that, just based on the previous flight, that these are not going to work. In fact, I feel like we might even be in a situation where we need a value greater than 100%. So let's find out in this flight. Um, this might just be another ground uh, surface impact. All right, let's switch camera views back. So we're going to do our burn at 241 and a half kilometers. All right, so let's unpause. And let's go back to real time. So 241 and a half or, you know, 242 basically. And there's probably, honestly, I could probably do a quick you think about this so what might be interesting too would be we should be able to you know at this point where we're doing this plug-in you know 400 kilometers we should actually just be able to use a basic kinematic equation to figure out you know if we're moving at this speed how much yeah yeah if we're using moving at this speed how much distance based on the moon's gravity would we if we just did free fall never mind I know what my brain is thinking but it's not coming out quite right because that might help us determine I mean we might be able to plug in this value and say yeah we're, it's already too late we're gonna smash into the ground without even doing anything but let's uh, let's give it a try let's unpause 
So 242 kilometers, this time we're going to go 100% of our ground speed. Two hundred and forty two kilometers. Really tempted to go at like two fit or even now to be honest, but let's go stick with our number two forty two forty two and burning. All right, let's see what happens. Let's warp time forward. Yeah, I feel like we're gonna hit the ground again. So I think, I'm pretty sure we're going to hit the ground again. I don't need this up anymore. Let's bring up GPS VTOL just in case. Warp time forward. 20 kilometers. Yeah, I think we're going to hit the ground. So yeah, it, when the velocities are really high like this, yeah, we're going to hit the ground. No good. 1,500, Okay. So we just needed a little bit more because we were at 104 when we hit. So let's turn that off. Turn that off to get rid of the noise. And we're not going to try again, obviously. So let's switch over here. And we began the burn at E16 and we had a surface impact. So yeah, while this method is working when the velocities, you know, are uh, lowish, they're not, it's not working when the velocities are high. So, 50, 40, and clearly 40. we're in this particular scenario, we actually need to start the burn, not in between the range, but actually higher than this point so like 275 or something like that actually our vertical speed was really close to 50, it was getting really close 40, to zero so i think 30, even 20, 10. you know even a couple like even if i began the burn at like 250 kilometers we probably would have stopped up before we hitting the ground we may have then hit the ground 30, after transitioning 20, but uh so that's something 10. interesting to keep in mind uh, when the velocity is really high like that so so I'm not going to add another column for now, um, but uh, but yeah, okay. Um, I I kind of want to say it would be like, you know, this value plus another five percent. Let's see what that would be. So E sixteen times one point oh five. So yeah, 200, so like an extra 5% above that number, I think would have done it. Okay, so on the next attempt, if we run into this situation again, you know, we'll create like a 105% column. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. So uh, three successes followed by two failures. So interesting. All right, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you on the next attempt.